much uh, for joining us. We have prayer warriors all over the world, and one of our deputy prayer warriors, who is also a uh, deputy correspondent for this TV show, is Rudy Davis. And Rudy Davis has been away on some uh, rest and relaxation with his dear sweet wife, Erin, and we welcome him to the prayer call tonight and welcome him back on as a deputy prayer warrior. And uh, we are lifting up and praying up with all of our friends around the nation. This prayer line is open right now. Brother Rudy, how are things going with you and your dear wife? No, oh, thank you for asking, uh, Pastor Wally Drake. And uh, we have been gone the past week, and I'm uh, fighting a cough and a cold and a fever, but I've got a wonderful wife who's filling me up with good stuff, and we're going to serve the Lord in sickness and in health and <laughs> move forward and give him glory. But the reason I called in tonight, Pastor Wally Drake, is uh, I was catching up on my emails uh, over the past week, and I don't consider you the type of guy that cries wolf, but i got to tell you, uh, your emails have really shooken me to the core because they are not only coming after you, possibly through the IRS. You put a 99-cent flag on a fence, and now you have a court date, but I just got through reading uh, a six-page letter from some sort of international building code enforcement organization <laughs> that told you, if I'm understanding the words correctly, that you got to get out of that church by next Friday or they're going to demolish it and kick everybody out. <laughs> I couldn't believe what I was reading, and I'm just thinking we have got to raise the flag. Uh, and I wanted to talk with you personally about it, but I am I was absolutely flabbergasted re reading that letter. I'm not fearful. We're not to be fearful, and I know you're not. I know that's not a part of who you are. But can you help us understand the situation? It's like, wow, that's a, that was incredible reading that, reading that long letter. I, I put it up on YouTube, by the way, so everybody can listen to it if they want to. Amen. Thank you for putting that up. And ladies and gentlemen, basically what had happened is, back in 1988, my wife and I had been here at the church for a couple of years, and there was a flood here in Southern California. And there's a bridge right across the street from our church that had crashed in. And the flood control channel along that ditch was alongside many apartment buildings. And so they evacuated those apartment buildings uh, because they were afraid they were going to fall in the river. And so at that point, uh, Red Cross said, we're inundated. We can't get there right away. We need to call on somebody else. And it just so happens that the First Southern Baptist Church and Messianic Fellowship is just across that little river uh, from where that bridge had crashed in. And so they said, could you put people up? Could we, we need The Red Cross can't get here quick enough. They can't get their tents here. And I said, well, God told us to take in all folk. And so we took in the people that were evacuated, that were on the street, that had no place to go because many of them, even though we have motels and hotels, uh, most people can't, uh, you know, be able to just run over and go into a hotel just because their house has been evacuated. And so we put them up. We had people sleeping on the pews. We had them in the baptistry. We had them all over the church. And we even have a certificate. I have a certificate hanging on my wall that the city of Buena Park gave us as a church and me as a pastor because we had taken all those people in and done what the church was supposed to do. Well, anyway, to make the long story not too much longer, at that point when it was all over and said and done, there were a lot of people that were staying at our church that were not people that were evacuated. They were people who were on the street already but they just wanted a better place to come because the food was good and the Baptists were sort of nice to them. And so when it was all over and said and done, we had 215 people living in our church. And the city, the city said, you can't do that. And I said, I don't have any choice. That's what God said do. God said open the church. Tell them about Jesus. And we did, and we won many people to the Lord, and that number went down to about 100 people. And then the city got upset because we had these homeless people. They said it was okay to help people that had a home to go back to, 
But you can't help people that don't have a home. You can't help the homeless. And I said, I don't have any choice. I follow the word of God, not the city of Buena Park. And so we began our homeless shelter. Now, at that point, the city again came against us and said, you must put a special building up there for those homeless people, and you must get a conditional use permit to do that. And I said, well, it's God's house. It's God's property. I don't think I need a permit from anybody but God. And so the city said, oh, well, if you don't, we're going to sue you. We're going to come after you. And so I did my best to cooperate with the city. And so we went down to the city and spent several hundred dollars to pull a permit, a temporary uh, conditional use permit, uh, back there in their records show, uh, 1990, uh, 99, excuse me. And so we've had that conditional use permit all this time, and we've continued to house and to feed the homeless and tell them about Jesus. Because we tell them, we'll feed you, we'll house you, we'll clothe you, but we are going to tell you about Jesus. And if you don't like that, you go somewhere else. So we've done that, and we've had that conditional use permit. And now the city has come back and said, we've decided we don't like homeless people, I guess. And so we're going to give you 10 days before we make null and void your conditional use permit. It was temporary, and we're going to withdraw it. Now, they're withdrawing it over health and safety standards. And uh, we had, uh, because we have a lot of food and we have... Uh, we, they found some mouse droppings in our uh, dormitory and so forth. And so they said, it's unfit, and you've got to shut it down. And we have a permit from them for 52 beds. That's what we're allowed legally. We've uh, gone over that a time or two, but I didn't tell them. I just went and did it anyway, because I heard the disciples say, we're going to obey the law if we can, but if we have to, we will obey God rather than the man's law. And so that's what we've been doing. So now the city has sent out that letter that you saw, and anyone is welcome to look at it. We have sent out some requests to people who are in the business uh, of making buildings fit for habitation and so forth. And we're asking people to help us. Number one, we're asking people to pray. And we're asking some construction engineers to come in and tell us how we can meet the city's standards. But basically, the city told us this morning, uh, in 10 days, these people are going to have to be out of here, and uh, we're going to shut you down. So that's the story in sort of a big nutshell. <laughs> wow. No, we are absolutely going to be praying and count us in for the prayer warrior and the uh... <laughs> We'll, uh, we'll try to promote uh, for others because, you know, there's an old military saying, I know you're aware of this, it says you get the most flack when you're over the target, and with all the flack you're getting, you must be sitting right on the target. But but even better than an old military saying, even better than that, there's John 16, 33, and uh, uh, I think the Bible is, my goodness, I just can't even imagine being in your position. It's just all the, all the de uh, devilish attacks that are coming against you. But John 16, 33 says, These things have I spoken unto you. That in, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. So uh, we're going to be reading, the, reading our Bible and, the, and standing on the promises of God, and we don't want to see your church go anywhere, and we want to see all these devils that are coming against you, whether they be IRS or building code or international building code, for goodness sakes, international building code. We want them all to leave you alone and let you do the, the, kingdom, the kingdom's work. <laughs> Well, brother, and let me say, for people who wonder, well, is it worthwhile? Is it good deal to do, quote, social ministries? It's been more than 10 years now since we have not had at least 500 people per year pray to receive the Lord Jesus as their Savior and Lord. So God is doing a great work, even though the city don't like it. Amen. Amen. Great. So, please. Can I, can I recommend something on the topic of, of uh, homelessness? Go ahead. I have a very good friend who was the truth movement before it was cool back in, I guess, 2008. And she became, um, 
she gave up on the whole thing because everybody was uh, needing time to catch up. And uh, she wrote a book called How to Be a Hobo. <laughs> and she went off the bed and she wrote a book about it with all the terminology of the homeless people. And she is actually a train hopper. And uh, she was quite famous on YouTube. Her name is uh, Brooke Kelly, the Truth Fairy. Mm. And I read the book on my cruise, and it was one of the best books I ever read. It was really interesting. Amen. And I think any homeless person would really enjoy it. Well, praise <laughs> the Lord. Tell us the title of that book again and the author's name, please. Sure, it's called How to Be a Hobo. Okay. And it's by Brooke Kelly. And it's written in a style I've never seen before. It's raw, raw truth. And um, she is a born-again Christian, and she said the only reason why she was was because she met me and Rudy, mm -hmm. and the Lord intervened. And it took her a long time to get there, and uh, she tries to help the homeless kids as much as she can. And uh, it's just a really interesting read. I know Rudy reads the book in his left and his right hand, and he's got five on the go at all times, and he couldn't even put it down. Amen, amen. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I looked that book up. Brooke Kelly, How to Be a Hobo. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, hallelujah. Praise God, and thank you for bringing that to our attention. We'll certainly try to get a copy of it and, uh, and read that book. All right. Anybody else? We're hoping that you and Ken Hoven can come on our next trip. Maybe even Pastor Manning. It was so wonderful. We had great fellowship. Amen. That would be great. And I said to people last night, they said, well, preacher, what's fellowship? And I said, that's two fellows in the same ship. <laughs> that's exactly what it was. A bunch of fellows in the ship. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you all so much. I know y'all got a lot to do. You're welcome to stay on as long as you'd like with us. We'll be on for another 40, 45 minutes, but we know you probably need to go, and we welcome you. Uh, before you go, if you have to go, uh, Aaron, would you lead us in prayer, please? Oh, dear Jesus, heaven above, thank you for all your blessings. We are so happy to be in your grace of uh, God there up in heaven and we appreciate every single thing and every blessing that you give upon us yes, and we yes. love you Jesus and we just uh, we want to protect righteous like Pastor Wiley Drake and his trials and tribulations down here that are so horrendous and crazy and we want divine justice for the wicked evil doers we pray Psalm 109 on them because they're so evil and so wicked and I just love to see that uh, you reap what you sow, and I love to see it happening. Amen. And I see it every day, and I thank you, Jesus. In your name I pray, amen. Amen. Thank you. Anybody else have anything they'd like to share or pray? Go ahead. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we also would like to remind you that there is another prayer group, a 24-hour a day, 24 hours a day, prayer group that meets. I'm going to give you their prayer line number, and you're welcome to call them when you get through with us, of course. <laughs> but uh, they're on 24 hours a day. It's called 24-hour prayer. And the phone number is 712-770-4340. And the access code is 543 five 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 pounds so call that number and join that prayer meeting anytime 24 hours a day and they started it on 11 11 2016 and they're going to go for 100 days so join them pray with them pray for them listen in and join in and we thank you so much thank you rudy thank you aaron god bless you guys and keep up the good work no, thank you, Pastor Drake, and we're praying for you, and uh, we're going to tell everyone we can to lift you up in prayer and uh, that church for the cause of the uh, kingdom of God and Jesus Christ, and we pray that uh, the evildoers do not come and vacate and demolish and kick everybody out. So uh, thank you for standing strong, and uh, we're praying with your entire congregation. 
Thank you so much, and we appreciate it. God bless you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. <clears throat> okay, ladies and gentlemen, that was one of our deputy prayer warriors here on the Congressional Prayer Conference and one of our deputy correspondents for the Wiley Drake Show, and he is on there quite often. Is there anyone else on the line with us? Hello, anybody there? I'm here, Phil, and I also want to remind everybody about the Bundy's trial that's coming up, you know? Yes. You know, it's just crazy. They're trying to suppress all the uh, evidence, and um, mm -hmm. it's a real mess there. They're, they're staggering the trial in three tiers, and I don't think any media is covering it at all. No. Uh, it'll a year and a half before some of them even get trial with no bail. Oh, goodness. What a, what a shame. What a shame. Do you know what the trial date is? Um, I think it's starting February 4th, the first one. Okay. And uh, they'll have three tiers, so they'll have three groups for about three months. Well, we certainly, Lord, lift up these brothers and sisters who are victims of the system. They have preached the gospel, they have served the Lord, and yet they have been put in jail. Solitary confinement sometimes and others, but they've been put in jail because they stood against illegal, ungodly people. And Father, we pray for them now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you. Oh, there's so much going on. I can't even believe. Yeah, it's hard to it's hard to get a grip on what's happening. And my goodness, every time we turn around, there's somebody else is uh, being attacked, and uh, and the president is no exception. And uh, nor is the vice president. They've both been brutally attacked. They've not received any physical attack that I'm aware of, but they certainly have received a lot of uh, verbal attack and. We, Lord, tell you and ask you, please protect them. Anybody out there who doesn't have Jesus, I don't know how you cope with it. It's, um, he's my only saving grace. Amen. I just don't know how we could ever make it through without Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your salvation for us. Thank you, Lord, that even in times of trouble, you say, hey, I'll always be with you. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And you reminded your disciples, hey, they didn't like me. So guess what? This ain't a popularity contest. They're not going to like you either. And so, Lord, we pray for these folks in Jesus' name. Amen. How's it, Brother Davis, doing? He's doing well. We had a meeting today because we're going to try to respond from a legal perspective as best we can with this court case that, you know, we've already got, as well as now this one for the homeless shelter. And so we're hoping that his healing will be such that he will be able to be back here at the church uh, on Thursday of this week. Oh, well, that would be good. And we're He's not losing his magazine. I'm sorry? He's not going to lose his leg? So far, no. The right leg is completely healed. The left leg is still in pretty dire circumstances, but they are uh, working on it, and they got him a, a special... Uh, the doctor said the only way to save that leg is to stay off of it, don't use it. And so they're getting him a, a, a wheelchair, a special little scooter thing that he can get around on. And so we praise the Lord for that. And uh, but he has had considerable amount of healing. Oh, praise the Lord! Amen. So we have a friend here. You know, his uh, deacon. He, his name is Tommy, and he wrote a book about. Um, uh, I don't know what you would call it. It's kind of, um, he wrote the Bible, 
but he wrote it different way for people to understand it better, and it, it's really quite interesting. I don't even know how to explain it. I probably shouldn't have brought it up. Um, <laughs> well, we certainly we certainly know that uh, many of us have our own favorite versions and so forth. But uh, I'm not going to get in a fight with anybody over what particular versions and so forth because I know the Word of God is true. And uh, even when men have to write it down, because the Word of God uh, was the living Word, Jesus, and it was written by men. I personally happen to like the King James Version, but uh, there are other people that don't and like other versions, and that's okay too. I, I just encourage you to get in the Word of God uh, however you can, and to listen to God, because God is wanting to speak, and I believe we should listen. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, folks, uh, what I'm going to do now, I told you a little while ago about a uh, prayer call that's on 24 hours, and since there's no one else on our prayer line now, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to call that prayer line, put them on a speakerphone, and see if we can't uh, communicate uh, with them a little bit. Someone's knocking on my door, so I'm going to go see who that is. I'll be right back. In the meantime, what I'll do is I'll read a, a verse from the... I like uh, Luke 17. Hello. And, of course, this favorite is uh, the King yeah. 17. Yes, I'm on the prayer line, though, brother. Here we go. King okay. James. Will do. Okay, it says Luke 17, 3 and 4. Take heed to yourself. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. If he trespass thee seven times in a day, and seven times a day turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt. And uh, I find the key word in this uh, in this uh, scripture is the word if. If he repents, forgive him. So it goes in order. If he trespasses against you, first you rebuke him. And if he repents, then you forgive him. One, two, three. That's three steps. Very simple. Amen. Thank you, my sister. And, um, You're welcome. Appreciate you stepping in there and filling in for me. I had somebody at the door and had to go check and see who it was. And uh, the man that we've had the opportunity to minister to here, and uh, his name is Mike. And so I would encourage all of you to be praying for Brother Mike. He's doing well. He's cleaned his life up and serving Jesus now. And uh, we thank the Lord for that. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I've got the other prayer call, the 24-hour prayer call on. I'm going to put them on speaker and see what they're doing. All right. God bless you, Pastor Wiley Drake. You take care of them. You'll be in our prayers. And you too, Mike. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. God bless you. Yes.
Yes, Lord. Well, dear brother in California, this is Pastor Wiley Drake, and I'm in California, and uh, I've been listening to your prayers, and I took myself off mute and want to say that this is another Californian uh, that is praying with you folks and for you folks. Lord, we come before you knowing that you are a mighty God, and you can meet our every need, and we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. This prayer call has been a real prayer blessing to me. In fact, um, on Sunday night, we uh, had a fifth Sunday, and on the fifth Sundays, we on the on the on Sunday night, we usually have guests in to lead in worship and lead in preaching. But this, because it was a fifth Sunday night, we didn't have anybody, and so I decided, since I'm the pastor, that I would do it, <laughs> but what we did was we had about 50 people in church. We're a small church, but we had about 50 people in church on Sunday night, and I opened up this prayer line and put it on speakerphone and did it in our worship service here at the First Southern Baptist Church and Messianic Fellowship. So we had worship service uh, with our 50 people, and the eight or ten that were on the prayer line uh, here, and so we praise God for that opportunity. Mm -hmm. And may the name of the God of Jacob defend us. Amen. And may he send us help from his sanctuary and strengthen us out of Zion. Yeah. And I've just been praying that, you know, over the administration, the things that they've been trying to do, they really have been trying to do things, and, and they're just getting bombs or shot arrows. Amen. situation that he encounters and that the Lord shuts the mouth of those that, as, as the Lord's directing you, why don't you just pray that prayer? Okay. Father God, I just, I thank you for the honor and the privilege of even praying before you, and I thank you. You said where two or more would come yes, together, Lord. that you would be there in the midst of us. And I thank you, Father, that we, we may have won a battle with President Trump being elected, but Father, there's many battles now, and Father, I just ask that we would continue to stand strong, and Father, I do ask for your peace, um, that it says that you would keep us in perfect peace because our mind is stayed on you. Father, help all those that, that are getting bombarded 
from, from so many angles to keep that perfect peace, Father. And Father, I do, I do thank you, Lord, that for your word, for it's the one thing that no matter what we say, Father, you, you wrote it. And I always say that to you. I didn't write it, you did, but you will carry it out. And I ask, Father God, that, that not only would you make peace for him and for this administration and for our nation, Father. Father, we're, we just need to be aware that we're in, we're, we need it. We need your peace. There's just no other way. And, Father, I just speak that over this, this new administration. And, Father, I, and even your leaders, Father, I ask that, that they would have favor, Father, favor with God, but favor with man, Father, and you can do this. And, and I, I know you reminded me last night, even in Psalm 35, that you're the avenger, Father, that, that you, you know what's going on, but you're going to go before us and make peace for us through the blood of your cross. You're going to work it out. And I thank you for it. Let us just keep our eyes on you and, and not on all the things that we see, Father, even with me, even though I try to keep up with the news, I have to stay away from it sometimes and just look to you and I thank you Lord that you do have the answers and that even now you're working to to get to make our nation safe father and and father God and but more than that it has been on my heart for some time about this abortion issue and I just thank you father for the right supreme court justice that will not only be President Trump's pick but it will be your pick and I just thank you ahead of time that you will work it out and go before them. And, Father, that they will get, um, I don't know if you call that confirmed, but they will be put in place and appointed as the next Supreme Court Justice. And, Father, you knew Antonin Scalia, the one that died. And, Father, I do pray that this next one would have a heart like that, too, for I know he loved you, too. And I just thank you, Father. I thank you for, for your choice, and I thank you, Father, for a righteous judge, Father. We call them Supreme Court justices, but you are the Supreme God, and you're over them. And I thank you for it, Lord. Thank you for what you're going to do and what you're doing in our nation. And even though we hear voices that are not speaking truth, you did say in Psalm 61 that you would close the mouth of liars. And, Father, I do speak to that spirit in the media that you said, I believe you said in Micah, to hear the voice of the Lord. Father, we say the media, the, the one that's not speaking truth, you hear the voice of the Lord and you stop in Jesus' name. And, Father, I thank you that we can say this according to your word. And I thank you for this. And I thank you for the next Supreme Court justice that he will be one after your heart. And I thank you for that. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Joy. Appreciate that. Amen. Yeah. I'm so glad that we can call a prayer line and pray with some other people. So. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. And that's why, you know, these uh, prayer focuses, they may seem like, well, it, it, it may seem even different than how we've prayed before and topic by uh, topic of, of the day, but the Lord knows the greater vision of why he's having us pray these uh, prayer focuses. He knows the greater vision of what's going on, and right. so is he's uh, establishing earth as it is in heaven, and um, I've been just reminded that, you know, there's uh, law enforcement officers are known as uh, the you know, servants of peace. There's the UN peacekeeping force, and um, we are the spiritual uh, peacekeeping peacekeeping force. And uh, the peacemakers will see God. So this is a, a key thing. Um, I, I'd like for us to go ahead and move so we can go through some of these scriptures and uh, freedom in the Holy Spirit, following Holy Spirit to what He is doing during this hour is Hebrews chapter 12, verses 14 through 15. Is there somebody that can go ahead and pick that up and read that up, and it'll just dovetail into what, we, uh, what we've prayed and what we've shared before. Hebrews chapter 12, 
verses 14 and 15. And if you just go ahead and let us know what version of the Bible you're reading, that helps too. Okay. Um, I'll read that. It's the, I have the New King James. Pursue peace with all people and holiness, without which no one will see the Lord. Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble by this, and by this many become defiled. Father, I do ask we would pursue peace. Father, that is that is the what, what you gave our leader, and I just thank you, Father, that especially with the intercessors, that, that we would pursue peace, because if we don't have peace within us, it's hard. And I just thank you, Father, for the peace that only you can give. And you said without it, we won't see you, Lord. And, Father, we I ask that all of us as intercessors would look carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God. And, Father, that we wouldn't have any root of bitterness in us, Father. And, Father, I just I thank you, Lord. Yes, I thank Lord. you for your word that cleanses. Thank you. Amen. Anybody else that would like to, to pray into that? I'm going to read the, um, thank you, Joy, for reading that. I'm going to read the version of the New Living Translation. It says, work at living in peace with everyone Amen. and work at living a holy life. For those who are not holy will not see the Lord. Look after each other so that, look after each other so that none of you fails to receive the grace of God. Watch out that no poisonous root of bitterness grows up to trouble you, corrupting many. And, Lord, just as Joy read that, Father, I've reminded this poisonous, bit of root, bitter, poisonous root of bitterness just reminded of how many cancers of the soul have grown mm. from a poisonous root of bitterness yes, that Lord. we can't even see, Lord. I know that that's been in my in my case, Lord, that, that there have been some, not just one, but some poisonous roots of bitterness, and as you've revealed them to me, that that's where even physical problems have started, uh, Lord, that in just dealing with that, uh, uh, beginning with forgiveness of those that have offended me and have offended us, and releasing that to you, Lord, that instead of bitter waters, uh, springs of living water have come up and over Lord, uh, to bring peace, and Father, instead of spewing out poison, Lord, we uh, pour out your love, Father. We pour out words of life, words of love, words of hope that come from the innermost parts of our being that come from you, Lord. And that's our desire, Father, mm -hmm. that we would look after each other uh, in speaking words of life, words of living in peace. Yes. The truth, the grace, and the love of Jesus, speaking truth in love, Lord. We just thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Father, I believe you're teaching uh, Donald Trump how to do that, Lord. He was just an excellent example of uh, Vice President Mike Pence, Lord. He just it's not a fake peace, Lord. It's the peace mm -hmm. that he has in you, and knowing that you're his Savior, you are his Father, you are a good, good God, yes, Lord. you are his King, you are sovereign, Lord. And Father, we just thank you, Lord, that uh, Donald Trump, President Trump, Lord, is reacting and being filled more and more with the peace of God just rooting out, and the love of God, rooting out any roots of bitterness, Father, and offense. Father, we just thank you and declare that his speech will become more reflective of the wisdom of God, the peace of God, the truth of God, Lord. We just, we thank you, Lord, the wisdom of God. We thank you, Father, for all of those things, Lord, as you lead him and he pursues your peace, Father. We thank you, Lord, that he would become known as a peacemaker, Lord. And that the, and the peace 
maker of, of God. We just thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. This is Barbara again. Father, that, that he would have wisdom, that, that he would not be insulting the people that he needs to work with and that need to cooperate with him. We pray, Lord, for the, for the um, proper function between the two branches of government and that, um, that there will be that wisdom and, and certainly that there will be peace restored in these relationships. Thank you. And he could speak a word to the weary. And Amen. And I also ask that he would have the ear of the learned, that he would hear your voice and listen and obey. Yes, Lord. And Father, I just feel like if if many will pray for him, Father, that we will start seeing this more and more. Mm. And I just I thank you. I do thank you for um, Vice President Pence, and I, I thank you for the influence that he is. Yes, Lord. And I thank you that he has a lot of godly counselors. And that's what your word says, that you're there um, among more than one counselor, Father, godly counsel. And, and I ask that in our government you would set in place men and women with your wisdom, Father, in, in, in our nation and even in our cities, Father. And I thank you for it, Lord. That wisdom, you said, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and that they would know this. And I, I know, Father, you have your men and women in both the Republican and the Democratic Party, that you're not a Democrat or a Republican. And I just thank you, Father, that that they'll be praying, and that will make a difference, even the very people that work with them. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I, I just ask you to give, this is Dorothy, I ask you to give him your counsel about and surround him with wise counselors about the, the uh, U.S. Embassy in Israel. And that he would be able to follow through on his commitments that he made, Lord, that you would protect him from counsel from too many sources. Thank you, Lord. Father, we pray that over the Supreme Court seat also, Father, not only this one, but the ones that we believe are to come, Lord, that he would be led forth with your peace, and Father, that his decision for this seat would be made in peace, Father, just asking that it would not be made until he fully has your peace, and he knows that it's your peace in the decision, Father, we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. Amen. The next scripture is 2 Timothy 2.22. Mm -hmm. And um, I will read it. And if somebody would like to pray into it, um, or if somebody would like to go ahead and read it, it's 2 Timothy 2.22. And just let us know what translation you're going to be reading from, too. Did you say Second Timothy two twenty two? Yes, sir. Well, Lord, this is your word. Second Timothy. 2.22 says, flee also youthful lust, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with all those who call on the Lord Yeshua HaMashiach out of a pure heart. And I apologize, I'm reading from the King James Version. Mama, do you want to pray into that? Father, I pray that you would help all of us, young and old, 
to flee those things that you call youthful lust. Lord, we know we can all get stuck on being immature. And Father, I pray that you will help me to not be immature, that you will help me to flee those youthful things that I want to do but shouldn't do. And help me to pursue, that means to go after, help me to pursue righteousness. And then, Lord, you give me some other words that I'm to pursue. Faith, love, peace with all those who call on the name of the Lord out of a pure heart. Lord, help us with this word as we try to apply it. Father, thank you for using us, working with us and through us. And Lord, sometimes in my case, in spite of us, I thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do with this word in our life. Father, you said, you promised, this word that just went forth, it will not return void, but will accomplish what you want it to accomplish. In the mighty name of Jesus.
his ways are pleasing to you, that you are the one that makes his enemies at peace. Yes, Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, as we're on this prayer line, we think of prayer, and I'm thinking right now, Lord, of one that I saw written on my calendar, and that is this week, on the second day of February, on Thursday, the National prayer breakfast will be held at the Hilton Hotel where death tried to stop a president many years ago and every year the national prayer breakfast is held that first or the uh, first Thursday in February and Lord I would pray for we understand that there's going to be somewhere around 3,000 or more people attending this national prayer breakfast from all walks of life, from many nations around the world. This will be an international prayer breakfast. And our president, Donald Trump, will be the keynote prayer warrior in that prayer breakfast. Protect him. Protect his thoughts. Protect his words. And may the word of God go forth from that national prayer breakfast. We lift it up and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name. you pray for um, the Secret Service and those that are around him, um, just of the peace of God to be on, on them in every situation, in, uh, they, in, in it, as the Lord just shows you to pray, just had a picture of the Secret Service around him. Lord, we do pray for your hand of protection through these men and women that are referred to as secret service because their jobs are to protect our leaders and in particular our president and vice president. So Lord, as this sister has been prompted by your Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, lead these men and women Father, as we pray for them, we know they're in a category of what many of us pray about, and that is first responders. When 911 is called, they ask if you want police, fire, paramedic in D.C., do you want Secret Service or Capitol Hill Police and so forth. So, Lord, we lift up all of those men and women who have the duty on a daily basis, and especially on these special days, we know, Lord, that the devil likes to intervene in anything special, and this is a special national day of prayer. And I would pray for those Secret Service agents. I would pray that you would give them keen wisdom and keen vision to see what the devil might be trying to do and to be able to thwart it. Thank you for them, Lord, and use them and protect them is my prayer in Jesus' name. And then thank you, Joy, Joy again. I just want to say, Father God, you have your secret service too. Amen. And your your that says the angel of the Lord encamps round about them that love mm -hmm. him, and I just ask that he. I know he has an angel protecting him, yes. but I also ask it would be your secret service as well as theirs, Father, that would protect him and Pence and 
and people that are coming, Father. And like she said, I, that you would make peace at this prayer breakfast by the blood of your cross, mm -hmm. that they would sense your, your presence, Holy Spirit. And Father, I just thank you, Father. I, I just kind of thought of the Pentecost so many years ago when they said there was 120, mm -hmm. and now there's 3,000, and I know if they're going to be speaking in different languages, Father, mm -hmm. I just ask that you would show up yeah. and that, yeah. that you would even give President Trump the words to speak, Lord. I just thank you, Father. Just let yes. him have the tongue of the righteous. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, Joy. We have one, uh, one more scripture that we'll just go ahead and close off with until... Uh, and then we're going to turn it over to the next moderator. And it's Jude chapter 1, verses uh, 1 through 2. And I'm going to read this over all of us, and then I'd like for us to just uh, have just one or two prayers, brief prayers, so that we can be timely and turn it over at the top of the hour. Jude chapter 1, uh, verses 1 and 2. Of course, it's Jude 1. This letter is from Jude, a slave of Jesus Christ and a brother of James. I am writing to all who have been called by God, the mm. Father, yes. who loves you and keeps you safe in the care of Jesus Christ. May God give you more and more mercy, peace, and love. And Father, I pray this, Father, and over everyone that's on this line, Lord, that has been on before, during, and after, and in the days to come. You have been called by God the Father, who loves you and keeps you safe in the care of Jesus Christ. May God give you more and more mercy, peace, and love. In Jesus' name. If somebody would like to go ahead and just maybe a couple of people have a prayer, brief prayer, and then we need to turn it over to the, at the top of the hour. This is my friend in North Carolina. Can I tack one little thing on to the prayer for the prayer Go ahead. Go ahead. Lord, you said that all things are open before you, that you see the hearts and the motives of, of people. Everything is open before you. And you also say, and I conclude, that you reveal the hidden things to us, and the secret things are open to you, and we're asking for you to just watch over that breakfast and reveal things, let, let anything that is hidden and needs to be revealed, be revealed, we thank you for this team of secret servicemen and all the people, that all the people be alert, and, mm -hmm. and we thank you for your wall of protection around yes, these Lord. people, and, and uh, it covers the whole building, the assembly of the blood, and we cover the whole building with the blood of Jesus. And, and let your peace just reside in that room like a cloud. Let it just be like a heavy cloud mm -hmm. there. And, and let there be unity and spirit yes, Lord. And, and an uplifting spirit presence. Let your Holy Spirit just have reign there in this prayer breakfast. 3,000 men are together in your name and your, your words on their lips and in their hearts and in their present trust. Just speak words he doesn't even know he's going to say. Your words just flowing right out of him. It's a blessing not only to the people there, but to all the people who are going to be hearing the words that he said. And we thank you for loving us and arranging this thing for us. We praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Loretta, and thank you for pleading the blood of Jesus. And thank you, Father. Uh, thank you for that prayer. Thank you, Father. I plead the blood of G Jesus, Father, upon everyone upon this call. As yes, I was reminded Lord. this thank morning, you, Jesus. Father, for us to do that, Father, uh, today and every day, Lord. And, Father, we do plead the blood of Jesus over this important prayer meeting, Father. And remind us, Father, to pray, uh, Father, every day this week, but especially as Wiley, is that on Friday? 
Uh, no, ma'am, that'll be Thursday. on Thursday. Okay, on Thursday. Remind us, Father, on Thursday as we get up and even throughout the night, Lord, to pray. We thank you, Father. We thank you for this call, Lord, and thank you for the next moderator, Lord, that's going to be on the line. Just ask that you bless them, Lord, and, Father, just increase your holy fire upon this line, Lord, and just increasing the peace in each one of us, Father. We thank you, Lord, for bringing peace to our hearts, peace to our homes, peace to our communities, our states, Father, and to the nation. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Do we have the next moderator on the line? Yes, ma'am. It's Susan. I'm right here. Hey, Susan. Great to, to hear you on the line. Do you mind if I pray just a brief blessing over you? I would love that. Thank you. Okay. And you're in Texas, right? Correct. Yes. Okay, well, I'm, I'm in the eastern part of Texas. It's so Louisiana. Am I. But what you, we call Louisiana East Texas. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Father, I just thank you for Susan, Lord, from the great state of Texas, Lord. And thank you, Father, for her being on the line tonight and on the wall, Father, and for everything, Lord, that comes from Texas, Father, to the nation. We just bless Texas, Lord, Father, in this hour, Lord, as the cross and uh, the guardians at the gate. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, that was the prayer call group, and I'm going to now join another prayer call uh, that a dear minister friend of mine, uh, Brother Johnny Rice, uh, does at this time of night. Uh, Monday through Wednesday, I believe, but I'm going to call him and see if we can get him on. And you don't have to call, uh, you call him, but you don't have to put in uh, uh, access code. It's just the number 701-801-9663. And we're going to call them and get with them. And that's a group called Prayer Warriors for Trump. And we're going to bring them here on the Wiley Drake Show. This is Pastor Wiley, your prayer warrior from California. Got a suggestion. Hmm? Got a suggestion. Maybe we should call the Hello, register and call the meeting at 4 7 o'clock. And all the great work he is doing. Nah, nah. Amen. Hey, hey, it's okay. Huh? Wiley, it's, I'm it's trying a, to get on your prayer line. It's a good idea, but to get on here this late, man. Yeah. Well, brother, the phone line is up now, and there are people on it. I don't know what's happening in your area, but uh, it's strange. The old devil does everything he can to thwart things. But uh, uh, Hitchhiker, why don't you call in and see what you can get if you can get on? I got the same problem, but I'll try it. <laughs> Somebody else join us just now on Prayer Warriors for Trump. That sounds like Brother Jeff Wright. It is, Pastor Wiley. I was just hearing Brother Johnny tell me about his chapter. Video tape. I was protesting. I can't see from the latest executive order about travel bans on Muslims from terrorist-dominated countries. That was about 200 people he found at 8.30 tonight in front of the Supreme Court meetings on the uh, west side of the Supreme Court. But uh, he had issues again with uh, his phone, so was unable to I guess he'll be back in just a moment. Maybe that was him going off is what we just heard. That That's probably what I heard. Heard the, the bell sound there, and I thought somebody coming on, but it must have been Johnny going off to check his phone. But anyway, Pastor Wiley, we're uh, lifting up our president again today. We're saying, God bless Donald J. Trump. By Jesus' blood, stand beside him and guide him through the
the night with the light from above, with God's wisdom and his strength in him, his protection around us all. God bless Donald Trey J. Trump by Jesus' blood. God bless Donald J. Trump by Jesus' blood. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So, Pastor Wiley, I was listening to Alex Jones today. Are you still there, brother? Pastor Wiley, you still with me? Yeah, I'm still here. Go ahead. Alex Jones had a new name for D.C. I wondered if you'd heard it before. He said it stands for District of Criminals. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I had heard had that. You heard, had you heard that one before? Yeah. But I like yours. I like yours better. District of Christ. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for causing D.C. to be the district of Christ where Jesus is. Amen. Over everything and everybody that happens there in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And we bind the devil from uh, distorting the current... Uh, Executive order banning travel from uh, terrorist, the seven terrorist dominated countries that were designated by President Obama several years ago, at least two years ago. Sorry about that. That's all right. What's on your heart tonight, Pastor Wiley? Lead us in prayer for our president. Well, Lord, I come before you for our president. His name is Donald Trump and our vice president. And I'm reminded, Father, that you said it is our duty to pray for those in authority. So I do pray for those in authority especially Donald Trump and Mr. Pence. Yes. Amen. I pray, Lord, that they'd be keenly aware of your presence. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Father, we claim the favor of scriptures tonight for our president and all of our leaders. I understand that uh, some of the Republicans are going weak in the knees right now, John McCain, Lindsey Graham, Susan Collins, about this executive order, and uh, I do thank you, Father, for your word in uh, the book of Psalms, in chapter, I believe it's chapter 5 and verse 12, that says, for you, Lord, will bless the righteous, or will say Donald Trump, with favor, will you surround him as with a shield. That means uh, you'll cause everybody to like him and want to help him, and rather than the devil twisting everything to make him look bad, you'll cause everybody to give him a break, give him the benefit of the doubt, um, have a desire to help him, rather than believe the worst and want to believe the best about the man, because you love him, Lord, and we love him. We believe he's an answer to prayer. He's a miracle from heaven, obviously, it's a extraordinary political situation unlike any in American history from what I understand. We do pray for a miracle in the economy. I was hearing a lecture today about uh, the bubbles that one economist sees propping up in China and so forth and uh, we do pray, Father, for uh, of course it seems like I've been praying for the economy ever since I got here. They were always talking economic collapse but we're we're speaking uh, we thank you for a tithe, the blessings of tithers, Lord helping us to be faithful in our giving so you can do what your word says and rebuke the devourer, rebuke the 